coin toss, right? The coaches do not have to attend the coin toss in CYO unless you really want to. I would recommend that the new coaches, if you have any, okay. attend the coin toss. Okay. Okay. I can't right now. And then other than that, um, Put you in the morning. once we run the coin toss, then we'll figure out who the visitor and uh, home team mm -hmm. are just by looking at the score sheet. Usually sure. Randy says the second team that's listed on the top will be the visitor. We're going to call the toss. Right. We get the court first. We're five and five. We've always been ahead or real close to being ahead. I don't think we've ever gotten so far behind that you know we're like half hour behind or whatever. So yeah. that makes it nice for warm up. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of time on the court with your kids yeah. before we even run the coin toss. Which I like because the kids have been doing whatever, and now they got to get them focused back on volleyball. Yeah, They're the outside truth. running around <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and then once we get the warm ups finished, um, we don't worry about getting the lineups in. What we do is we just get them on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And let's say this team's the serving team. Mm -hmm. All right. So the the way we do it in the, in the scorebook is I go with that player's number, and then we go around the right here mm -hmm. and these positions are one two three four five six that's mm -hmm. the position number mm -hmm. not the player number okay right. and then if you're on the receiving team then your right front which is in the number two position not the mm -hmm. player number is going to be the first server because when you get the ball back that they're going to rotate back okay. Okay. okay um Sometimes the new coaches have a little trouble with that because they're not sure. Yes, and yeah. the, you guys have been around our officials for a long time. Uh, the people I bring in, they love doing it. They, mm -hmm. they come in with a great enthusiasm. They're willing to help the coach. They're willing to help the players. They're even willing to talk with fans about mm -hmm. questions or things like that. Because we want, the, we want the game of volleyball to be something that people enjoy. We don't want them to come in and they see stern faces. And, you know, I, I was talking with my uh, trainer last night. We were on our way back from uh, South Lake Tahoe. And I said, you know what? When you walk into a volleyball gym as an official, presentation is everything. Mm -hmm. Baseball, uh, football, basketball. Uh, look at the officials when they walk in the gym. Do they look like they're happy to be there, yeah. that they really are going to enjoy themselves and help help out. Okay, we're trying to get that across to our volleyball officials, even at the highest level of high school. Right? Mm -hmm. When you walk in the gym, look like you want to be there. Yeah. Not that you're faking it, but look mm -hmm. like you want to be there. So that's what I instill in our CYO officials. Look like you want to be there. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourselves. Be congenial. Be approachable. Sometimes you have to be a little direct, not stern, mm -hmm. but just a little direct. Okay. But then let's go back to our, you know, our presentation, how we want to be seen. Mm -hmm. Because the kids see that, and if they think that you're having fun, but you can teach them. That's what I like about CEO at all. I get to do a lot of coaching and teaching out here, right? Rather than, and I hope that helps the coaches. Mm -hmm. I've heard coaches at the upper level say, don't coach my kids. And I'm like, okay, all right, I was just trying to. Mm -hmm. This is early in the season, you know, just trying to help them out. But at the CYO level, we get to coach, we get to teach, along with helping you guys understand that, that volleyball is something that's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be a certain type of sport that's, I call it a pure sport, mm -hmm. right? So if we keep treating it like that, these kids leave this gym and whatever level they go to, they'll remember that. And I hope they remember that all the time, that they started out having fun. Okay, so anyway, once we get them on the court, of course we start the serving and then back and forth. And um, I know you guys are trying to get them to pass the ball and do certain things, and which is fine because, uh, especially at the eighth, eighth grade level, if they can pass, set, and hit the ball over the net, usually we'll let that second ball go over a little bit. You'll see it, mm -hmm. right? Because if they got it up to the center. Mm -hmm. Twice and let him have it. Yeah, yeah, let him, let him have yeah. it. If they mangle it a little bit, yeah. I mean, there's a difference between just, you know, totally throwing it off, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they mangle it a little bit and we get a hit out of it, hey, that, that's why they're here, yeah. you know. 
Of course, the younger ones, if they get a bump set spike, oh my goodness. <laughs> they can Crowd goes wild. Pick up the ball and throw it up in the air as a setter. And mm -hmm. Let's hit it, right? So um, as we move along through the match, there are certain things that the kids sometimes don't understand. Let's say we have a serve coming over, okay? Let's say it's coming from here. And I'm, I'm taking the serve here. And I just decide to do this. Whack! Not no, no. two hand in there. And it can be mangled if it's two hands, not caught. But they're going like this at the ball. I'll blow my whistle and I'll say, you cannot block or attack a serve. And then hopefully the coach picks up on that mm -hmm. and says, you can't swing at the ball. You can't, you can, you can bump it here, but you can't take on that to the ball, right? And rarely have I seen a block in CYO, a block serve. Yeah. A block attempt, or you, you can make an attempt, but you can't actually make contact with the ball. So we try to get to that early with the kids. Is try. And we know you guys want them to bump mm -hmm. the ball. Some of them can take it with their hands. They have that skill set, um, which is fantastic for us. Um, but once once all that is cleared up, and the kids understand that, I think it makes the game go a lot smoother. What I find is at this level is the same thing with little kids basketball that I do, I referee basketball too, mm -hmm. is after that first set, and we've made all of our adjustments as an official with what they can and can't do and they understand it, that, that second set is almost like easy as pie. Yeah. Now the coaches can coach, because mm -hmm. now they don't have to worry about the, what, what are the kids doing out here as far as playing the ball, mm -hmm. right? And that's what okay. I enjoy watching is that the kids have learned something that mm -hmm. they can't do and what they can do and now we can play volleyball okay um let's talk about this center line right here all right um when i come down hopefully i'll bring some athletic tape and we'll tape across tape there. across him yeah yeah so that we have something some some reference point yeah we got um, tape too you've seen us call center line faults especially when your setters coming up from the back row and that ball is coming really mm -hmm. close to the net, and they have to get after it, and you see this, right, after they land. <clears throat> That's gonna be a foot fault, right? Now, if they land here, we don't have a problem. Even there, that's not a problem. Right here, that's not a problem. Here are some of the time, sometimes we see this very rarely. They'll come here, okay, and then they go to turn. Uh, no. And they're off. And you're wondering, why did he call yeah. a foot so fault? He was on the left. Completely across the line with the foot, and also with the hand. Okay, oh. All right. Hand has if it's here, any part of the hand over here, it's going to be a foot fall. It's not a hand fall; it's a foot fall. A foot fall. Okay. Um, then, of course, any other body part other than the hair. We've seen this happen at our higher levels too. <laughs> a cut in the Only net. tail goes across, across the line, or their knee goes. The knee goes here. That's going to be a foot fall. That's a fall. All okay. right. Any part of the body, the knee, uh, hip, uh, head, shoulder, that's partially across the line, it's going to be a foot fall. Okay. It's just the hand and the foot that you have, we have to worry about. Okay. okay. okay? Um, let's go to, now the little kids, uh, I think they have that 10 foot mm -hmm. marker. Yes. Fifth grader. Fifth. Fifth yeah, graders, fifth grade student. underhand serve. Mm -hmm. um, I remember last year we were up at Bishop Minogue and we had a kid serving fifth grade overhand, overhand from, from there. there. Yeah. And of course, you know, we had to let the coach know and the coach says, yeah, but there's a fifth grader. They can serve whatever way they want. No, no, no. That was my match. <laughs> course, the hopefully the rules, yes. hopefully you know, the rules are at the table and I say, here coach, here's the rule. Okay. They have to serve overhand. Whatever. Overhand, they got to be behind the fourth. Okay, how do they got to be there? The line. Behind, yeah, overhand's behind the line. Right? All the yeah. way back. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, let's say this is your serving line. Any any part of the foot on or, or over on a contact with serve, because some of the kids can jump serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've had parents say, but they're over the line. They're, they jump from the line to the line. I had an older gentleman walk up to me one time. I think it was after the match or during a timeout, and he said, she's jumping across the line. 
And Carson was a jump serve. Jump serve. So, so she was letting the field in the air, and she was you can the be ball across. up here. Yeah. And he thought that was a full play, oh, right? Yeah. And I said, uh, sir, as long as she leaves from behind the line on the jump serve, she can jump all she the way up. She can hit over the, here. All yeah. the way up to the net. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with a backcourt attack in your back row. Mm -hmm. They can leave from behind the line. Yeah, they can hit as long as they make contact behind the line. No, no. Oh, as long as they're no, 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 in no. the once air. They, once they leave, okay. they can contact the ball Anywhere. even if they so jump all the way up here. If you're a back corner okay. and you can make it there, you're good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll that see here. that at the yeah. uh, yeah. highest level. Highest level. Yeah. Yeah. They'll set those guys yeah. and they'll jump and they'll hit. They'll, yeah. they'll be at the net when they hit it. From here, right? right. Okay. So, wait, so it's on the quick fault thing again. I'm sorry. It's just the On or over any part of the foot. If they leave here and the dog. Key here is the ball has to be completely above the height of the net. If they For do a quick fault. from here. No, I'm talking about serve. Oh, okay. the serve. Yeah, the serve. serve. All right, go back to the serve. Go back to the serve. So what's, any the, what's part, the quick fault? Raise any part of the foot on the line on contact. Is a quick fault. Foot fault. Okay. okay. Completely behind. Right. right? Yes, we're good. And what 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 I try to do when I tell uh, um, my officials is that. If they look like they're getting close, because you know we're on the floor, we don't we don't use the stands mm -hmm. because yeah. I like to be where I can control the subs, I can talk with my scorekeeper, and I can manage this situation mm -hmm. where if I see a foot fault getting or they're getting close to the line, I'll go back here and say, Coach, you're getting close, and I'll just go back here, and usually the coach says, Hey, go back to it, so I don't have to stay over here and watch for a foot fault, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do. I have to go back a little bit so I can actually see what's going on. Yeah. So you might see that once in a while. Okay. Um, okay. But the, the thing we like to do is more preventative and teaching than trying to uh, strictly apply the rules, right? Because mm -hmm. if we did that, we never get <laughs> might as well just turn off the lights and go home. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's called intent of the rule. Mm -hmm. There's the rule, and then there's the intent of the rule. So, those have to do with uh, back row uh, players, uh, server. Now, some of the teams have what's called a libero. Yeah. That's the player that's kind of like a specialty player. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to serve in one position, mm -hmm. right? They can only serve in one position, mm -hmm. usually for the same player. Coach wants, to, wants them to come in and then they go and play. Go across. Now, the libero has some restrictions as far as ball. Jamie Corbett calls the pool office, please. Jamie calls the pool office. Using their hands to set the ball, okay? Mm -hmm. And the, there's a number of factors that come into play. Let's say I'm the, I'm the libero, okay? And I come up and, they, you know, the coach says, set the ball, okay, for the team there. So I set the ball, and the player is tall enough, they hit the ball, and the ball's completely above the height of the net. But I am not in the attack zone. I'm behind the attack That's zone it. as a libero. I can set that ball. It can be attacked. Okay. It's completely above the height of the net. Now, if I'm here, I set the ball, finger action. Mm -hmm. Player, ball goes completely above the height of the net. It gets attacked and they complete the attack. Now we got back row attack. The barrel oh, okay. cannot set the ball, finger action. In front of that. In front in of that 10 foot. Earth, Unit, any part, any, any part. At any time in the rotation? Or any just time, on your back any players? Time to, any time. The libero will never be in the front. Because they can only sub for back row. Right. For back row They'll players. always be in the front. Back. Okay. They'll never be in the front row. Okay. Okay. So that's just, yeah. that doesn't happen very often. It does happen at the varsity right level. Yeah. A lot. Right. Not a lot, but enough. Yeah, enough okay. Say. Mm -hmm. So usually it's the coach over there that's saying something. If the libero is <laughs> like this close. They mm -hmm. think they see the angle there on their right? line, but they're not. They're usually saying something over there, but we'll just say, "What I do is I do this." And that means that the libero is legal. Is that um, for any player or just libero? Just the libero. Okay. okay. So any other player can come into the zone and come into the zone and, and set the ball. Okay. Right? Okay. As we're talking about that, usually this applies to the setter. Setters up here. Okay. And some of our test setters are tall. I mean, even at the eighth grade level, mm -hmm. right? So you got a setter up here, and she decides that the ball's too close, you know, to set it. So she goes up, 
and her the ball was completely above the height of the net and she bumps it over. We got back on track. So we'll do that, we'll do that again. Even if she's a front row player? player? No, she's okay. a back row player. Back oh, Thank you. She moved Thank up. You. She's okay. coming out okay. of the back row. Okay. I got him. I got him. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Set sense. Comes I got him. close. Mm -hmm. She goes up. Bang. See where my fist is? Right. And you, I'm going to contact the ball above the height of the net. Right. Okay. Now if I do this. Yeah. I do that. Because it's I'm below okay. the net. Right. Or the top of the net. Yeah. Okay. But you'll rarely see, unless you've got this player that's really athletic, they have some hitters around them, then the coach says, okay, <laughs> you, I don't care if you're six foot, you're going to set. Mm -hmm. You have the athletic ability. Mm -hmm. You've got hitters that can hit. Mm -hmm. You'll see that once in a while mm -hmm. out of the eighth grade team, mm -hmm. which is fun for us. Because mm -hmm. now, now that makes us watch what's going on mm -hmm. with the setter's yeah. hands, where's the ball, no, that, because then that helps us when we move up and do varsity level. Okay, we're accustomed to watching mm -hmm. tall players or players that can jump, mm -hmm. you know. You'll hear this out of a coach once in a while. Tall player, okay, look at, I'm up. Mm -hmm. Ball's above the height of the net, and I flip it over, and I call back row attack, and the coach says, but she didn't jump. So. <laughs> Usually she after the match, the I'll wait till they shake hands. I'll say, Coach, bring the setter over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll say, Setter, reach, just reach up as high as you can. And they're reaching like this. I said, Coach, she doesn't even have to jump. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. already yeah. illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Just standing still okay. or up yeah. on her tiptoes, right? Mm -hmm. So the setters, um, the setters have to learn about what they can do and can't do and how they're going to manage a close set. Uh, an overset, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ball comes over, she's back row and she goes up and tries to, and she does block it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we got back row block. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Um, I'm going to say that some of this doesn't okay. apply to the, you know, the, yeah. the littler kids because right. they're usually not going to be getting Tacking that far right. above the net. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that they won't ever, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> of course it Terrible. applies to setters that can jump. Mm -hmm. They have a good vertical mm -hmm. jump. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, let me see, what are some of the other things we see? Oh, what, um, we don't have our antennas on the net right now, no, no. but the, the antenna usually lines up with the outside, outside edge of the antenna okay. lines up with the outside edge of the, of the out of bounds mark. Ball has to be, be played completely inside, inside the antenna, antenna. Like all the way to the ceiling, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So if a ball comes outside the antenna, of course it's gonna be out goes over the top of the antenna, and you'll see some weird angles. These kids will be chasing a ball over here, here's your antenna, and they bang it over, and I'm standing here, I'm gonna do this. Because <laughs> I wanna see if it's gonna go over the, over the antenna. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you know, if I, if I see it, and it's lit fair, I'll say, Coach, that was legal. And we move on. Mm -hmm. Just Keep playing. so like we communicate, mm -hmm. right? So if it goes over the antenna, the antenna it's out, hits the net antenna on the body of the net, mm -hmm. it's out. Of course, anything out here outside the antenna would be out, okay. all right? So antenna play, it comes into, uh, it's important when we have tough angles getting the ball back into the into play. Okay. You know, usually it's coming up here, mm -hmm. not so much back here, right? right. Um, as you're trying to tell your kids, get the ball in the middle of the court, <laughs> you know, just get it in play, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, let me see, what are some of the other, what about net, like in the net, touching, yeah, the net, net fall. Thank you, because it's different, it's different at different levels. I'm not sure about club ball. I'd have to ask uh, one of my uh, um, colleagues that does a lot of club ball. But while the ball is in play, okay, a lot of things will happen, especially with your set, more so than the hitters. Hitters will, you know, they might swing, break it. They might swing, just kind of barely bang the top of the net. Of course, those are net fouls, right? Sure. But usually it's your set. She's, start, she's coming up, the ball is coming close. She gets her foot right, she goes in the set, and then she goes to turn. Mm -hmm. I and saw that in, uh, in the last two nights, Monday and Tuesday night, I saw that, I don't know how many times, Monday night I've been trucking. Mm -hmm. The setter will come up, you know, set the ball, and she goes running to her position to block or something, and she scrapes and the, she net. the net. And sometimes they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. They don't feel it. They're so intense on what's right. going on, right? It's so, anything that touches the net, like hair. There you go. Thank you. Uh, uniform, anything like that, you know, and just a little brush. And of course, 
close as a pig when we call. Just that little, little, just a she, uh, she hardly touched the net, mm -hmm. but that's okay, I mean, it's a net call. But the hair, yeah, you'll see that ponytail is bang. Over there, that's where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Touch yeah, the net, two. close it with her hair. Okay. Hair, hair, that. hair, hair is fine. Usually it's the ponytail. Okay, they're Usually swinging their head around. Their head that's doing it. Usually yeah. it's the ponytail. Swing, okay. Yeah, banging it. Um, anything else on net play? We like to see, <laughs> of course, <coughs> any of us that, that are doing this, we're doing varsity too. Mm -hmm. So we like to see the, the bumps that spike and a bang and a block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a bang, a, sweat, a hit, mm -hmm. a block. And then a dig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got that three things going on. Keep it going. We're doing great. Yeah, great. We're doing out. great, right? Okay. Um, so on that, let's say we do get a block. Okay. They can, they can, a blocker can then bump it up, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Th this is the time when you can get four hits mm -hmm. on a side. Because the block is. Blocker goes up. Ball touches the blocker. Some of the blockers don't really, even at the varsity level, they don't realize they can go after the ball. Again. But yeah, yeah, because they can get, that's when you can also get two contacts tips up. on the same play. Yeah. A okay, because they can do the block and do block it, and bump it up or whatever. It. No, mm -hmm. that's the first hit here. Or they block it, somebody else gets it, that's the first hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you'll get two on the same play, a block, bump, mm -hmm. okay, or four hits, Good block, one. Then you got three chances, chances. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. All right. Um, what about tipping? Can they break their wrist and tip the ball over? Can they push the ball over the net? Yeah. The, they're get, the kids are, that are athletic these days, they're getting so good at it, it's very hard sometimes for us to get uh, decide on prolonged contact mm -hmm. because club, I think club and, and college level, they let them go a little more. They get to hang, not hang on to it, but push it. Push it. And usually where I see the problem is when the player comes up and they overran the ball. Mm -hmm. Right? That's when you start seeing it. And they throw it. You know, they start throwing it over the ball. Okay, but they, in this league here, they can go up and push it. They can, they, yeah, yeah, they can, they can push, as long as they're not prolonged contacting it, you know, and okay. staying with it. Okay. Um, the one we see for sure on the tip is not so much the, the push, but when they go up and they go up with both hands and they go to oh, direct, direct the block. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that happen at, at the upper level. I've yeah. seen it at eighth grade level. Yeah. They go up to get it and they hang on to it just a little bit too long. Yeah. The boys will or yeah. the ball is coming over here and they go and get it over here uh -huh. and they're up in the air and they try to send it over there. Mm -hmm. That's where we see the contest. Is yeah. that legal? No, it's not. Okay. No. It, it is in beach. And especially, <laughs> especially <laughs> behind yeah. their head. Yeah. They're, they're going to have to have fantastic hand and athleticism yeah. to get that ball back over if it goes back here. Got it. Okay. Right? That's that's challenging. Okay. I don't even know if we can do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to try to at this point. Right. Um, um, what about um, a foot? ball comes off of a foot. As long as it's in contact with the floor, we're good, and any other, and any other body part. Yeah, any, other, any body part can make contact now in ball. Okay. Okay. They, they can kick the ball. They whatever. can bump it with their head. Bump it with their head, shoulder, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, which leads me to this next rule, which is double contacts on serve receive or on the first ball over. First ball over, they can mangle it, as long as they don't prolong contact it, don't catch it. Don't mm -hmm. catch and throw it. Mm -hmm. We'll let them go, and it'll, it'll come out weird. You'll see where they'll come to pass it. First ball over. Hits here. Mm -hmm. Bing, bam, bang. bam. Yeah. Bing, bang. Okay. Regal. Mm -hmm. Double contact. No, not on first contact. Okay. okay. As long as it's not a lift. Okay. Where we see the problem is when it starts setting up in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you try to get your kids to pass the ball and lift with their hands. Mm -hmm. right? right. Ball will come in. Mm -hmm. They get ready. Sticks in here. Mm -hmm. If they're really, if they're really set up, it's probably not going to stick very much. Mm -hmm. But if they're not set up, it's going to mm -hmm. give. And that's where we have the problem with the okay. with the lift. Okay. okay. The lift on the right. Um, you'll see kids at the net. Uh, ball comes over. They're not ready. They go after a one arm. And they go. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Oh. Or if it rebounds up, remember volleyball is a rebound sport, right? If it rebounds up, we're good. We're good to go. Right. But if they try to go after it and it kind of sticks in there, mm -hmm. right? That's a different story. Right? That would be a that'd be a win. Okay. Illegal contact. Can we go back to Serbian for a second? Yeah. Um, what's the count? And if they Ooh. throw the ball up and they decide they want to reserve it, how does all that work okay. with the count and the yeah, the there's a lot, a lot of things going to happen with serving. When we blow the whistle for serve, usually our signals are at the same time. They have five seconds to contact the ball. Not to throw the ball in the air, but to contact, contact the ball. Okay. Now, if that, if that, they don't think that toss was very good, in, I know at one level they, they have to let it hit the floor. The floor. Right. Here, it's here you can catch you it, we catch it or it. let it hit the floor, it doesn't matter, okay? And then they get another five seconds for the reserve, okay? Now, let's say that happens. I'm serving the ball, I get the ball, I'm getting ready to serve, here comes, here comes the whistle and the back end for serve, and I get ready to serve and I throw it up and I'm like, oh, jeez. And I step into the court to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't, I didn't go to make contact, so I can do that. I can step okay. over that line and I'll get my ball. Okay. Right? Now I go back, I get a reserve, I get the back end in the whistle, I throw the ball up in the air, and I serve, and somehow we manage to get a point. Okay? I go back to serve again, I throw the ball up in the air, I don't like my toss, I catch the ball. No. Can't do two in a row. Can't do two in a row. End of the court. End. Or just two in a row, period. Two in a row, research. Period. Period. With the same player. Oh, okay. Right? So okay. each so each player gets one, one mulligan one and research. then one reserve. Per yeah. rotation. Per rotation. Rotation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, I got mine done. Okay, here comes here comes the next server. We got the ball back. I'm all done serving. I'm in another position. Of server comes back. Throws the ball up in the air. Doesn't like it. Catches the ball. We got a research. One. Every one of those players could have a research. Reserve. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't, I've never seen it happen. Yeah. But, you know. Um, I didn't know that count. The no, other thing is um, when we have a research, okay, when we have a re not a replay, that's different. Yeah. A research, okay, we throw the ball up in the air. Ah, didn't like it. Coach says, sub. Can't stop. Coach says timeout. Can't timeout. Coach says, uh, let me see what else the coach is asking for. A uh, libero replacement? No, it can't happen. Nothing can happen on a reserve. So once they've once they've started the motion of a serve, no. whether they, what, they whether done, they've, 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 they've done their success thing, or not, the ball, mm -hmm. then you can't they, they are reserve, they get a reserve, they're in the position to stay. They're ready to go. Okay. The coach wants to sub. Timeout, libero replacement, none of that can happen. Okay? Nothing can happen during the research. Okay. We gotta research we gotta serve the ball, play, now they can do all of any of those things. Okay? Mm -hmm. Unless we have an injury. Well sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have an injury and we got a research yeah, going on. Okay, right. we're gonna take we're yeah. gonna take care of that. Yeah, okay? right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make sure we're gonna get that right. And no earrings, no jewelry. Bingo. Um in high school. You can have flat barrettes, uh -huh. two inches long, flat, unadorned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see a little no butterfly yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Bobby okay. pins, no longer, longer, I believe it's two inches. I okay. think that's the correct length. Mm -hmm. They can have that in their hair. No other jewelry. Uh, you'll see kids come out with those hair bands yes. mm -hmm. on their wrist. wrist. We, we try to get them off because if somebody gets caught on that and loses it, I mean, breaks their mm -hmm. finger or whatever, mm -hmm. that's not cool. No. Um, no earrings, of course. We've had kids come to play, <laughs> and this is something that coaches should be aware of at the CYO level. Is I just got my earrings pierced, pierced. tonight or yesterday, yes. and they want to tape them, put those plugs in there. Yeah. Can't no, do it. Can't do that. Okay. Now, the plugs, if they're. Um, I say we taped them last year. They have to. They have to be like those plugs that keep the earring holes open. open not earrings to keep the holes open but they have like not studs almost like a gauge in a way i guess you would say yeah, but yeah. yeah there, there, are, there are plugs that they can keep in okay 
Um, I'm trying to get our officials to apply the rules like we do at the upper level, but sometimes we have to look at, okay, what's the situation? situation yeah. 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 There's five the situation? players out there. Let yeah. us save it. <laughs> right. Yeah, they all had this gearing party. Yeah. Or, Played with that last year. You got the, the ears pierced party or something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to be reasonable about that. Uh, but, okay. they but if they have earrings, on, actual earrings under there, yeah, yeah, yeah. they can I'm take those say, out. Hey, okay, what's under there? Yeah, yeah. And we can't check. We cannot go and pull it off. Right. We got to take their word for it. Okay. Can't we tell right. our kids check each other. So hopefully <laughs> yeah. they're not going to lie to us, and we can just we can move on and move on and play volleyball. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll check knee braces to make okay. sure that they're safe okay. because mm -hmm. if you have this going on at the net underneath, mm -hmm. on the other side, knee braces involved, mm -hmm. that, that could get ugly, especially that yes. plastic one with the hinges on it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And we tell coaches we know that when a knee brace is ordered, there's a protective sleeve that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Where's the protective sleeve? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the player left it at home. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. you, got it. you got a knee brace, bring the sleeve with it. Yeah. Keep it all together. Right. Right? You might tell yeah. your players that. Okay. It'll, that way, we're, all we're doing is protecting the kids. Yeah, of course. Not, not just the opponent, but this player could get hurt too. Right. Yes. Yeah. Brace it, right? Yeah. Now with yeah. libero, can a libero be subbed at any time? Is there any No, remember, we're talking about a libero replacement. Okay. The libero is the replacement. The sub is a sub. The sub is sub a sub. sub happens in here. Here, right. Ten foot to there. Right. Libero Let's placement go. happens here from here to the end line. Right, but if I have a libero, because I've never right. played with a libero before, but if okay. I have a libero, I can, so when the play is over, she can go in and yep. come out at yep. any time for anyone in the back row? Um, or the same player each time? Usually it's the same Amanda player. Andy, Usually what they do is the, it's like for the middle blockers, that's mm -hmm. when you see at the upper level. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you can decide who, maybe you have a player that's not having a great game. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, hey, I want that person in there. So make sure it goes in for the same person. But it doesn't right? have to. It doesn't have to. Well, <coughs> usually you're putting one in for one of your back row players that's rotated in here. And then the next one that rotates from the front comes back here and you say, I want the libero. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think, I don't believe the libero can just keep coming in for like all six players that you don't want in this position. In that right. background. Right. Right. Okay, it has to, it does have to coincide with the player. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, right. But the subbing, the subbing has to. No, the subbing here, here's, <coughs> I saw this the other night. And let's talk about the substitution zone at the same time. Coach says, hey, I want a sub, okay? Just, you know, one sub, and one sub. So we want the player up here, somewhere between the 10-foot line and the center line, okay? We want the player to come out over on the court. Usually they're gonna do high fives. They're gonna show their numbers to the scorekeeper, and we're gonna get the score, the numbers right. So this player comes in. Let's say it's two for three, okay? Two comes in for three. And the coach says, after a couple plays, says, no, I want 10 in there for three, okay? That's legal. Oh, yeah, you can't. Oh, can? oh. watch, watch what's going to happen now. So you got okay. three in, two's on the bench, ten's coming in for three. Okay? Ten for three. Legal. Now the coach says, oh, wait a second. I want two back in there for ten. Legal. You can have three players rotate in the same position. Now, oh. if you say, no, I want ten for eleven, Already was on the court for a different position. So as the long, so if I had three, as long as they're subbing, those three players are subbing for that position. Right. We're okay. And each other. And, and each, each other. other. Yes. Any time they rotate? No. And, yeah, anytime. So we can do it anywhere on the like court. Like if Ken goes back in a corner and, and isn't passing very well, you say, hey, I want two back in there. She can do it, he can do and it. And came in for three. Remember, we already switched to three and Denver. two, right? So two's coming in, 10, get over here, all right, go. Two can go back over right. there. And then three can come back in for two. And 10 can come back in for three. Okay. All in the same position. You can you could sub five players in one position, as long as they don't go in for somebody else. If you oh, say, hey, three, I want okay. you to go in for 20 after this whole thing's happened. No, three, 10, and two have already done their thing. So they can always sub to, no matter yeah. who. 
on and that position. So it's either the number two. Not position. in another position for another player. Okay. All right. But when Sometimes that's hard. That's hard. Uh, so what you're doing in that is you're switching. Like let's say you have three middle blockers and they're not. One's not doing well. You can put the other one in and the other one in and the other there one you in. There exactly. you go. That's what you're right. talking about. So but exactly. You wouldn't then sub a middle blocker in for your setter. No. And then sub him in for the outside hitter. No. And then okay. No. Now okay. I follow you. Yeah. I got okay. You. Okay. Yeah. We're not. Um, <laughs> We're not quite there yet, but well, that's okay. <laughs> we yeah, but it's, it's good to know to because it's good to know. if you want to, because all you got to do is ask the official. Official, can I? Say, hey, we have two can, duds hey, that day. Two, two <laughs> went in for <laughs> three. Say that, two went in for three. Can I put ten in for uh, two? Two, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can put ten. Okay. Uh, can I put three in for five now? Put the ref, the ref's gonna say no. Mm -hmm. They already went in for 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 okay. two and ten. Okay. Whatever. Okay. okay. The best the, the best thing I can tell coaches is. If ever in doubt, ask the official. Mm -hmm. The official knows the rules. Right. And, and it's, it's, we call it a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. Right? We call it a teaching moment. Okay. So I want to encourage, if this video Easy. goes anywhere, sure. I want to encourage all the coaches, to every level, especially the new coaches that have never coached before. They've been around the sport. They may have watched it. Mm -hmm. um, at the lower levels even, talk to your officials. Mm -hmm. help, let them help you out. Okay. <laughs> We've had coaches come in the gym. They're so no nervous, they don't even know what to do during the warm-up, you know, with yeah. the kids, you know. They're just so nervous because it's their first time over. Yeah. And usually by the end of the match, they're settled down, and they kind of have an idea what's going on, mm -hmm. and so do their kids, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And that's when they'll usually come up and thank us. Hey, thanks for all your help. That's why we're there. Mm -hmm. We're there to help. We're not mm -hmm. there to, like I said, be stern and, you know, forceful mm -hmm. and, Oh, that's right. Right. Like the, you know, right. <laughs> and they can, and on the serve, they can serve anywhere on the back line. Yes, thank you. You got these two hash marks back here. Yep. All right. And hopefully they're on every court and every gym. Okay. They can serve. Now we've had this happen. Okay. We got it between the hash marks. You have to stand right there and serve. That's legal. Uh, any part of the foot outside of it. We've had this happen too. Jump serve. They come around. They come yeah, around it. The will come in from out here, and here comes the parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. First thing they did wrong was, according to the player or the parents or the coach, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. the player, mm -hmm. is they were outside the court. Mm -hmm. The next thing is they went up and jump served. They were inside the court. Yeah. So now <laughs> we have it's all legal, two things. It's, it's all legal, good as long as they're between those marks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, volleyball has changed so much as far as allowing the players to play. Yeah. I really yeah, like what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, because there were so many. Re Remember the six foot area? Oh, yeah. Yes. If you were a good server from over there, no. you when were I, done. You when do I that. played, there was no libero and stuck right yeah. there. And that was right. a long time ago, but it was no very rally scoring. Yeah. Coaches, coaches yeah, might not realize this, but the, the toughest, the toughest pass to make. Okay, the toughest pass to make. Center, let's say your center's coming up from the right back, okay, and you're gonna come, you, you're gonna be over position, you want them at the net, mm -hmm. we know that, mm -hmm. okay? The toughest pass to make is when they serve right at that center, mm -hmm. and that player over there has to pass it while the center is it's trying to get their it. angle mm -hmm. and get the ball coming from this position, yeah. okay? If I'm the center coming up, and my coach wants me right around here, I'd be serving, mm -hmm. but that's me. Oh yeah. You know, okay. Um, let me see. What else? Oh, I got one we've uh, had to do this with the, even the upper level. The players are getting in position for serve receive. It doesn't matter where the server is back there. And they do this, this right here. And the coaches say, "Get on the court." I said, "Coach, they're illegal." Or that's when I'll say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I'm back here ready to pass. The setter's right here. The setter, come on, come on back here, and I'll show you something. You, you get here ready to pass. Okay. 
I'm sure there's something that's going to happen. Okay? I'm the setter. If all gets served, if all get ready to get served, I'm like, and I'm like this. Okay? Wash my feet now. And I'm like this. And the coach says, she's overlapping. The rule book says Back one foot. body part and this feet has to be behind. Okay? Behind. Or where I'm about an inch behind her. Okay. This body part. Because usually it happens like this. He takes off, contact for serve. I still have my body part back okay, there. Okay. I'm good. Now, if I do this, contact for serve, now we got to do it. Right? Okay. okay. So, what we'll do in that situation, let's say the setter left early and it was too obvious. I mean, she wasn't like all the way up there and then they contact for serve. Even a little bit early, okay. Mm -hmm. And we do that even at the varsity level, okay, because we don't want to have to call that if we don't have to, especially if it's early in the match. Yes. Now that happens on what's 20, uh, 22, 23, and they're behind. They're behind, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you've got you got to call that, yeah, right. So it, it's almost like situational. Mm -hmm. We're not telling the coaches, you know, you try to cheat. Or they're cheating, okay? It depends where we are in the match and what level we're at, right? This level, we'll tell the coach, well, leave him a little early, okay? And then hopefully that gets corrected that and we we'll move on. Because right? our, our setter, our setter, depending on the level, our setter is the key to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You take the setter, you yeah. take the setter out of the match. Yeah, in trouble. We're done. <laughs> you don't have any volleyball going anymore, <laughs> right? Um, one last question. Yeah. Uh, I'm watching like my time because I know yeah. where five o'clock traffic is when I hit. It's gonna, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with we have bench set up, say in front of the chairs are on the red line right here. Um, ball comes off of first hit and it shoots over here. Can they, if we have, can they go over and continue to play it if it's into or beyond the bench? Let's, here's the deal. I mean, let's, I know safety is involved. Let's line up the benches first. Yeah. If we, we have the chairs behind there to give them, we give them enough room in here. In there, feet. yeah. The chair can only be, the, the, the last chair in this mesh here can only be behind, just behind the 10 foot line. Okay. Because you don't want the, you don't want the coach or a player sitting in here. Because that's our area of work. Mm -hmm. We're going to work, we're going to work all the way back here if we have to, depending on what's going on on the floor. So we got the chair set up, player comes in and that's, that's our line. Let's say that's the front the of the front chair. Of the chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ball comes in here, one foot in play, okay? okay. Or they're doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. One foot on the floor in play. Same thing with bleachers. Okay. Okay. So when we play at certain schools, like we had this happen last night at, at South Tahoe, we had a uh, fan, here's the bleachers, we had fans on the floor mm -hmm. with the mask off. Since they can play all the way up the bleachers, guess who's in the way? Fans. Right? So we've got to go get the um, support manager and say we've got to move the kids either in the bleacher or get them down there. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So one foot in play. Now, let's say the ball's coming and the chair, kids, the player's sitting on the floor and pulls the chair out of the way. <laughs> right. That's illegal. That's illegal. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Other than that, um, I hope we have a great season and I hope we're uh, continuing to help you guys and make the kids better and make the sport of volleyball better because that's our goal. That's our goal. Okay? Wonderful.